Hi, I'm Murdoch Kalegi. I'm the Medical Director of Wellness FX. We're very lucky to have with us today a fitness and nutrition expert and Wellness FX practitioner, Ben Greenfield. Ben, thanks for coming. Thanks, Murdoch. Today we'll be introducing our performance panel that'll soon be available for consumers through Wellness FX. The performance panel consists of various hormones and nutrition markers that can enable you to better understand how to improve your athletic and overall fitness performance. Now, reviewing some of these markers, our body is constantly in a state of building up muscle and burning fat, that's your anabolic state, and a catabolic state, where your body's breaking down these tissues to try and produce energy. Certain hormones drive these processes. Growth hormone pushes you towards the anabolic state, where you can build muscle and burn fat. That's the goal of most athletes. And we, it's hard to measure growth hormone directly, so we use a surrogate mar marker called insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1. The catabolic state is primarily driven by another hormone called cortisol, which breaks down tissues and uses it for energy. We, athletes tend to not want to be in the catabolic state. They want to be building up muscle rather than burning through it. Now, the anabolic state that athletes are trying to achieve is primarily driven by certain anabolic hormones. The most well-known of these hormones is testosterone. Testosterone helps build muscle and burn fat and improve overall fitness and athletic performance. But testosterone in isolation doesn't tell you everything. Testosterone is formed from a precursor called DHEA. Also, testosterone itself is usually bound to something called sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG. When it's bound to this protein, it's not biologically active. It's the only active form of testosterone is the free testosterone that's not bound to SHBG. Now, not all testosterone gets used in the body. A lot of it gets converted to estradiol, the chief female sex hormone. And while we think of this hormone, estradiol or estrogen, when we think of females, this can actually occur in males and inhibit athletic performance. Now that we understand these hormones, Ben, what I'd really appreciate knowing is when you're offering advice and you're looking at these hormones all together, how does this help you understand how people can improve their athletic performance and really take it to that next level? Cool. Um, thanks for the explanation, Murdoch. There's, there's a few things that you got to bear in mind when you're an athlete, and the, probably the most important thing for you to check out is this top cycle that Murdoch was showing you in terms of the anabolic catabolic balance. Um, you're, you're going to create cortisol no matter what if you're, if you're a physically active person. Um, the issue is if, if you test and you are, for example, hypercortisolic and your, your cortisol is high or your testosterone to cortisol ratio is very low, that can be a marker for overtraining. It can be a marker for inadequate recovery status. And in a situation like that, it could be that you are not recovering properly or that you're stacking too many hard workouts in a row. It can also be a, a, an indicator of lifestyle stress or inadequate sleep. And what a lot of people don't really focus on when it comes to the testosterone cortisol ratios or, or too much uh, cortisol or too low of a, a testosterone count is the idea that a lot of this can be tied to nutrient status as well. Um, meaning that even if you're well recovered, if you're low in a lot of the other you know, nutrients or vitamins or minerals or some of the other stuff that, that you can get tested with Wellness FX, it's gonna affect the, the testosterone and cortisol ratios. So one thing that's really important to pay attention to is cortisol, if you test and it's high, you wanna dig in and look at some of the reasons that that could be occurring. Kind of synonymously to that, um, you know, two, two of your anabolic factors, the, the IGF-1 up here, because we're usually not going to look at growth hormone, IGF-1 is just easier to test, as well as testosterone. Um, if you're looking at those and um, they're low, that also can indicate a, a few different things going on. So, for example, high levels of cortisol is going to jack up your sex hormone binding globulin. And uh, you can test and have high total testosterone. Which a lot of people do. They'll go into their docs and tell their doctor they want a testosterone test. They'll get total testosterone. It'll be elevated, and they'll be like, "Great, I'm good to go." But if free testosterone is low, which is the case, if you have a lot of cortisol, you got a lot of sex hormone binding globulin, um, you're it's going to be kind of useless to have high total testosterone. So that's another thing that you can pay attention to is is where are you at in terms of your ability to recover and to repair and rebuild muscle from an anabolic standpoint. 
And um, you know, you pair that up by looking at your stress factors from a cortisol standpoint. You can make some decisions from a nutrition standpoint and from a recovery standpoint in terms of how you want to change things up. Well, that was great. I mean, it's it's clear that oftentimes when people athletes plateau, it's because of some of these hormonal issues. And I think you identified some of the key issues that if you understand where the problem exists, people can take it to that next level. So thank you for taking a look at this and. We're going to review some of the other performance markers in the next module.